Hello, and welcome to another Devil May Cry The Bloody Palace paint series. Today, I'll be working on the Proto Angelo, a mini boss styled enemy that leads several Scudo Angelos into the fight. One of my personal favorites, look at that big ass sword. So, I start off like every other model by trimming up the mold lines. You'll primarily find these on the shoulders, shoes, and occasionally up on the legs, the side of the cape, as well as the blade. After a quick prime of matte black, I'm ready to go ahead and start painting. I went a little heavy with the primer this time around, but that's alright, it just turned out a little glossy. First, I use a combination of troll skin green and mithril silver to make a metallic green. I cover all of the parts of the body, basically every armored bit, the ribs, the arms, the shoulder. I avoid all of the bony spikes that protrude from the elbows, knees, horns on his head, as well as the strange shoulder guards. I take my alien purple and mithril silver again and create another one of those weird purple, almost lavender-like metallic colors to cover all of the horny protrusions. Again, these are found on the shoulders, arms, legs, head. You want to be careful not to get too much everywhere, especially since he holds the sword so close to his shoulder, but you can fix that later. I take some alien purple and begin base coating the cape with this. We're going to be returning to the cape a little later with a specific blue wash to get the correct color down. But for right now, make sure your paint is evenly distributed. Always use two thin coats of paint, regardless of where you're painting. If you so choose, you can even get beneath the cape. I take some dark stone and paint up the blade with this. You could also use the same purple metallic that I used for the thorn parts of his body, but uh, I feel like, in hindsight, maybe that was the right choice. With Shadow Wash, I make a one-to-one -one mix of water and wash, and cover basically every part of the body except for the cape. I cover the legs, the thorny parts, any bit of armor, his face, the rib cage, shoulder pads. You want to make sure that your wash is more evenly distributed, and if it pulls anywhere too much, you can kind of pull it away using your brush. If you wish to have a darker appearance to your model, use more wash and less water. This model has lots of crevices for the wash to sink into and give it some real depth, but be careful how it pulls as it might uh, create some undesirable effects. I would suggest holding the model flat when you do the sword because it'll pull at the bottom. I take some blue tone or some very watered down blue paint and go ahead and cover the entire cape with this to try to make some sort of like bluish purple effect. It doesn't give me the right result immediately, but I go back and try again, and the second time around it looks much better. I take some red tone, and I go ahead and I use this to cover all of the purple lavender-ish protrusions coming from his knees, elbows, shoulders, and his horns. These thorny parts seem to have a slightly different color than their Scudo counterparts. I also cover the sword, although in hindsight it didn't really do much of a difference. I take my Mithril Silver, and I'm just going to cover the hilt of the blade, as well as the handle, with this basic metal color. 
If you want, you could also use this to highlight specific pieces of his body, such as his fingers or such, but I only use it for the blade, as well as the hilt attached to it. And you want to make sure you hold your brush sideways to make sure you don't get any of the paint anywhere besides the edge. I return with that same troll and metallic mix, and I'm going to do a quick dry brush of the entire model's green parts. All I'm doing is very lightly hitting the edges of the armor that I think would catch the most light. That way they stand out from where the wash dulled down the color. At this point, you can call your model done. But uh, I went ahead and I decided maybe I want to do something with the sword's weird divots or paths that go up along its blade. As well as the strange thorny parts on its face and body. They glow in combat, so I took a bit of my pixie dust pink and watered it down severely. I added about four drops of water to every one drop of paint I used. I took a detail brush and I attempted to follow the lines that they glow in the game, but it kind of came out a giant mess. Coming back with a regular brush, I figured I'd double down on it and try to get the color to sink in. Again, this kind of just made the sword look a little messy and I was a little disheartened here, but I ended up fixing it. The pink can fit very easily into the crevices of the weird thorny bits that cover his shoulders, as well as his horns. When enraged, the Proto-Angelo has these strange glowing veins that appear throughout the thorny, weird, almost rock-like bits that cover his armor, and I thought this would add to, to the effect. It also brings the model much more to life. I go back with my Dark Stone, and I just sharpen up those lines a little. I'm not the best at freehand, so in my opinion it kind of turned out a giant mess. But. It's nothing you can't go back and cover with more paint. Even if it doesn't look the best up close, when you have it on the board it'll look much better. Not to mention the pink really stands out. Every little bit helps. You can even go back over it with a red tint, or maybe a, even a pink, to sort of glaze and blend the pink glow to so try to make a more lighting effect. But with that, I clean up the base and I call it done. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a comment and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.